Maximilian Pegasus, otherwise known as Pegasus J. Crawford, was the inventor of the modern dual monsters as the wielder of the Millennium Eye, an item that afforded him great power but influenced him to perform evil deeds by kidnapping Salamoto, which made him the main villain of the Duel's Kingdom arc. But after his defeat, Pegasus was released from the Eye's control and became one of Yugi's strongest allies throughout the series, and even helped out Jade and Yugi during the events of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So today, we're going to take a look at Pegasus' 10 most important cards, why he loved to use them, and whether or not the creator's cards were as strong in the TCG as they were in the anime. And parading into number 10, we have Flying Elephant, a card which showed off just how much Pegasus loved to humiliate his opponents while also being a cute reference to his love of American cartoons. And that's because this card is actually a direct reference to Dumbo, one of Disney's classic animated movies where the main star happens to be a flying elephant. This is technically reflected in its TCG art, where the card's flying abilities make it immune to destruction by card effects once per opponent's turn. But that's not all, because if you apply this effect during your opponent's turn, then you can activate another effect during the end phase, which makes it so that during your next turn, if you manage to inflict battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack using Flying Elephant, you automatically win the duel. Although in the anime, this card is just a regular normal monster, with flavor text that says it's immune to ground-based attacks because it floats in the sky. Now, Pegasus technically never used the card himself, but it did feature as part of his duel against Bandit Keith at the Intercontinental Championship. However, after the two duelists had both sat down, Pegasus used the powers of Millennium Eye to see every card in Keith's hand, which allowed him to figure out the perfect strategy he needed to win. But Pegasus wouldn't just be satisfied with the victory and wanted to completely humiliate his opponent. So instead of dueling, Pegasus called forth a boy from the audience, wrote him a small note, and had him duel in his place. And the note ended up being enough to defeat Keith because after he summoned Garnetia Elephantus, the boy countered with Flying Elephant which won him the duel while humiliating Keith in the process. This caused Bandit Keith to swear revenge on Pegasus, which led to his involvement in the Duelist Kingdom arc, but also allowed for the creator of Duel Monsters to show the entire world that at his game, even a child was capable of beating a world champion. And that statement is still true to this day, because with the knowledge of the meta and the right deck, anyone can win a Yu-Gi-Oh event, but not with the effect of Flying Elephant. The TCG version of the card is actually a bit stronger than its anime counterpart due to the new effect, which adds a solid bit of protection and even alternative win condition that can lead you to winning the duel. The main problem with the card though is that it's really difficult to use and awkward to build around. It's unlikely that your opponent is ever going to go out of the way to pop your flying elephant, and even if they do, you have to go through extra steps of clearing away their field so your elephant can attack directly on the next turn. This isn't impossible, and there are even some janky FTK strategies centered around giving your opponent Yadro Invader to force them to pop flying elephant. But for the most part, it's really unlikely you'll be able to resolve this win condition meaning that Flying Elephant will never terrorize the meta the same way it terrorized Bandit Keith. And so it makes sense that the only way Pegasus managed to get some use out of Flying Elephant is because his Millennium Eye let him cheat and predict Bandit Keith's moves down to the letter, as it's a car that most duels in the real game would never lose to. But it did at least allow for Pegasus to show that anyone had the capacity to win, even against the best duelists in the world. And snatching to number 9 is Comic Hand, which showcased how skilled Pegasus was at the game when he used it to defeat two duelists at the same time. And that's thanks to Comic Hand's absurdly strong effect. You can only activate it while you control Toon World, and it must be equipped to an opponent's monster. When it is, you get to take control of that monster, and it's also treated as a Toon. It also gains some Toon properties, which allows for you to attack your opponent directly if they don't control any Toon monsters. But if Toon World is ever not on the field, Comic Hand destroys itself and gives your opponent control of their monster again. Despite this downside, Pegasus used Comic Hand to great effect in his triangle duel against Dr. Vale and Crowler and Jean Louise Bonaparte who were working together as Pegasus had promised that if either of them had managed to defeat him, they'd both be employed in industrial illusions. This promise had turned the duel from Battle Royale into a 2 versus 1. But even with these odds, Pegasus absolutely dominated the pair by turning them against each other while the Toons crushed both Ancient Gear and Toy Soldiers. This left both Crowler and Bonaparte heartbroken and ready to surrender. But after some motivational words from Jade and Yuki, both of the teachers were suddenly re-energized and staged an impressive comeback and even managed to take down Toon Dark Magician Girl. But despite this incredible effort, Pegasus still had one more trick up his sleeve, and ended up taking control of Ancient Gear Golem by equipping it with Comic Hand, stealing Crowler's monster and turning it into a Toon. And because Toon Ancient Gear Golem is still an Ancient Gear monster, Pegasus then used the effect Mimic Cat to steal Ancient Gear Explosive from Crowler's graveyard to finish off both teachers. But if it hadn't been for Comic Hand, both Crowler and Bonaparte might have gained a victory over one of Duel Monsters' most prestigious duelists. Unfortunately though, Comic Hand doesn't carry the same strength in the TCG that it did in the anime, and a huge part of that is because of the archetype that it supports, Toons. Within Toon decks, Comic Hand is an amazing tool that gives a strategy a really strong going second play by letting you take control of your opponent's strong end board pieces. And the best part is, because the monster you take becomes a Toon, whatever you still is guaranteed to synergize with the rest of your deck. But because the Toon strategy as a whole isn't that strong, Comic Hand has never really had the chance to see competitive success. However, 
Comic Hand has a non-tune variant in Snatch Steel, a very similar equipped spell that allows you to take control of an opponent's monster, and that card is so strong that it's been banned for most of its lifespan. And that's because taking control of an opponent's monster is one of the strongest forms of removal in the game, as not only does it deal with an opponent's boss monster, but it gives you control of them, allowing you to use them for their effects, to OTK, or even just as free materials for an extra deck summon. So while it's definitely a shame that Comic Hand has never really seen much use, its effect is actually incredibly strong. And Pegasus does a great job of showing off how strong stealing a monster can be. And hopping into number 8, we have Dark Rabbit, a regular normal monster with a similar appearance to Funny Bunny, Pegasus' favorite cartoon character. And that makes a lot of sense because according to Dark Rabbit's flavor text, nobody is capable of laying a hand on this Funny Bunny. This made Dark Rabbit a car that was close to Pegasus' heart and one that embodied his love of cartoons. But Pegasus also uses particular monster in a really strategic way in his duel against Seto Kaiba. Because of his power of the Millennium Eye, Pegasus knew that Kaiba was looking to use his Crush Card Virus in order to destroy Pegasus' deck, and with his knowledge he planned a counterattack. By using negative energy, Pegasus doubled Saiga's attack and made it ineligible to be infected by Crush Card. But that's not all, because Pegasus also had a set Dark Rabbit on the field, and so negative energy doubled its attack stack, making it a really strong beat stick. And the card became even stronger after Pegasus activated Toon World, where Dark Rabbit gained two properties and could hide within the pages of Toon World to dodge Kaiba's attacks making it a really difficult to deal with monster. But the same can't be said for the TCG version of the card. And the main reason for that is because despite looking like Funny Bunny and being a parody of Bugs Bunny, Dark Rabbit isn't actually a toon monster. It's just a regular normal monster. This means that the card doesn't benefit from any toon support. And so there's no real reason why you'd play it in a dedicated toon deck, as it just won't turn your strong spell or trap cards online. And that's really unfortunate, because Dark Rabbit is iconic in its own right, being one of the first monsters ever that was turned into a toon. But at the very least, its legacy as a beat stick remains alive in the anime as one of Pegasus' favorite characters. And stealing number 7 spot is Mimikat, otherwise known as Doppelganger, another card that lets Pegasus use his opponent's cards against them. Mimikat can only be used while you control Toon World and a Toon Monster, and allows you to target card in your opponent's graveyard, and lets you either special summon to your field if it's a monster, or set it to your field if it's a spell or trap card. But most people are probably familiar with the DM version of the card, which instead of stealing an opponent's card, transforms it, and either special summons itself as a monster, or copies the effects of the monster's spell or trap card. This made Mimikat an excellent part of Pegasus' toon strategy that he used throughout the series as he could use it to create copies of his opponent's strongest monsters so that he could later turn them into toons, or he could just steal his opponent's powerful spell and traps, which is precisely how Pegasus managed to defeat Seto Kaiba. You see, in this duel, Pegasus was absolutely crushing Kaiba, who had challenged Pegasus for the right to release Mogubo's soul from the card Pegasus had trapped it within. This had already put Kaiba under a ton of pressure, and midway through the duel, he began to crack. Pegasus, however, was simply having fun, and used his duel as an opportunity to mock Kaiba and demolish his pride by playing around every one of his threats, talking about his love of cartoons and even stealing his blue-eyes white dragon to turn it into a tune. This angered Kaiba, especially when Pegasus threatened to make a second blue-eyes tune dragon, causing the CEO of Kaiba Corp to make a rash decision and attack Pegasus' dragon viper which is exactly what Pegasus wanted because his set card was Mimikat, which allowed him to copy Kaiba's Crush Card virus and infect his Dragon Piper with it, which meant that when Sword Saga destroyed it, Crush Card activated, destroying every single strong card in Kaiba's deck, and leaving him with nothing other than a single copy of Monster Reborn and the crushing reality of his defeat. But if Pegasus were playing the TCG, he might have been a little less cocky in this particular duel because Mimikat is a lot less usable compared to its anime counterpart. Its effect is actually really strong as several cards across the years have seen competitive success by stealing cards from your opponent's graveyard so that you can use them against your opponent. But like Comic Can, while Mimikat has an impressive effect, it's limited by the Toon archetype because instead of just being a generically impressive card, it instead requires Toon World and a Toon Monster in the field in order to use. This isn't an impossible requirement for Toon strategies, and they can easily take advantage of Mimikat's strong effect. But because the archetype isn't really that competitively viable, Mimikat hasn't really had the chance to see any real success in the TCG. Which is definitely a little sad, as the way Pegasus used the card was often incredibly inventive, and showed off his creativity as a duelist, and was the main reason that he managed to defeat Seto Kaiba. But at the very least, there are similar cards which can let you make fun of your opponent by showing them that you could use their deck better than they can. And still in number 6 spot is Dragon Capture Jar, one of the first cards introduced to the anime that had the capability of countering the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. But the way this card does this differs depending on the TCG or anime version. The TCG Dragon Capture Jar just forces all Dragon-type monsters in the field to defense position, and prevents them from changing their battle position, meaning that something like Blue-Eyes White Dragon won't be able to use its battle prowess against you. But in the anime, Dragon Capture Jar does something entirely different, and instead summons itself as a monster that literally captures all dragons on the field and steals them within the jar, preventing them from being used and absorbing their defense points. 
This made Dragon Capture Jar an incredibly strong tool in the early days of the anime, where dragon monsters were at their most fierce. But Pegasus didn't use Dragon Capture Jar as a strong removal option, as he also paired it with Dragon Piper, a card that in the anime could summon out the dragon that was sealed within Dragon Capture Jar, potentially allowing him to use his opponent's monsters against them. This deadly combo was used a couple of times by Pegasus, such as his very first duel against Yugi, where he used Capture Jar and Piper to steal Yugi's Komori Dragon to gain a major advantage. As a result, when Pegasus dueled Kaiba, Yugi did his best to warn Sato about Dragon Capture Jar to give him every advantage he could to save Mokuba's soul. Unfortunately though, this put Kaiba on edge, as he now had to predict when Pegasus had drawn Dragon Capture Jar, and whether or not it was safe to summon out Blue Eyes White Dragon, giving Pegasus a major advantage. This came to a head when Pegasus finally ended up drawing Dragon Capture Jar, sealing Blue Eyes inside of it, and then later summoning Dragon Piper so that he could summon out Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon so he could turn it into a second Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. However, the TCG version of this card isn't something to be feared. And a big reason for that is because of Dragon Capture Jar's new effect. If it had worked like it did in the anime and removed dragon monsters from the field, it actually would have been a really impressive trap card, especially for its time period. But its new effect is relatively weak because while it can prevent dragons from attacking, there are just better cards that exist that can either stop attacks or just remove your opponent's monsters from the field entirely. What's even worse is that Dragon Piper, the card that made Dragon Capture Jar an insane payoff in the anime, was also nerfed in the TCG. As instead of working alongside Dragon Capture Jar, Dragon Piper now just had a flip effect which destroyed all Dragon Capture Jars in the field and turned all Dragon Monsters to attack position. But while the TCG version of these cards are unimpressive, Anime Dragon Capture Jar showed off how impressive Pegasus was as a tactician. It makes center stage as an incredibly strong card during one of the most important duels of the Duel's Kingdom arc, and in a strange way, managed to show that even the strongest of monsters have their counters. And at number 5, we have Toon Summon Skull, one of Pegasus's most iconic Toon monsters that he uses the main Toon based threat in his duel against Yugi. Now, the TCG version of this card was actually based on the card that appeared in the Pyramid of Light movie. This version of the card can't be summoned through regular means and requires you to tribute a monster while you control Toon World. And while it's on the field, it has the same upside as most Toon monsters, letting it attack directly if your opponent doesn't control it too. But it also comes with the same downside shared by most Toons, which gives the card summoning sickness, and if Toon World is ever destroyed, Toon Summon Skull also destroys itself. Toon Summon Skull has a couple of unique things about it though. Because it's still a Summon Skull, it has a condition which makes it so it's always treated as an Arcfiend card. But it also comes with its own drawback, which it shares with the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, that makes us have to pay 500 life points in order to declare an attack. However, the original anime version of Toon Summon Skull was a lot simpler, because it was Summon Skull that was being affected by Toon World which prevented it from being destroyed by battle, and even allowed it to hide within the pages to prevent it from being selected as an attack target. And that was enough for Toon Summon Skull to be a genuine threat in the anime, as its high attack strength made it an amazing offensive option. And because of its Toon properties, there was no way for Yugi to deal with it head on. But Toon Summon Skull was more than just a regular beat stick. He was an example of Pegasus making fun of his opponent, and was especially poignant because Summon Skull was the monster that almost defeated Pegasus in the duel against Yugi. And so, the once terrifying demon was transformed into a silly cartoon character who squash, stretch, and taunt his opponents by pulling faces. But, despite his goofy nature, Toon Summon Skull, alongside the power of Pegasus' Millennium Eye, pushed Yugi and Yama Yugi to their limits and forced the King of Games to rely on an unconventional strategy. You see, because of the power of the Millennium Eye, Pegasus was always one step ahead of Yugi, preventing him from being taken off guard by spell and trap cards. Which forced Yugi to employ the Mind Shuffle technique and use the Millennium Puzzle to constantly switch between Yugi and Yama Yugi. This prevented Pegasus from using Mind Scan to figure out Yami's cards as Yami himself wasn't even aware of Yugi's cards and simply trusted his other soul. This technique ended up being enough to catch Pegasus off guard. It allowed for Yugi to surprise Pegasus by activating Living Arrow, which ended up destroying Toon World, and Mirror Force to destroy Pegasus' remaining monsters. But if it hadn't been for Yami and Yugi's quick thinking, Toon Summon Skull would have been enough to leave the King of Games defeated. However, Toon Summon Skull is a lot less of a threat in the real-life game. In general, Toon-focused strategies are rarely ever competitively viable. But even within the Toon strategy, Toon Summon Skull just isn't the boss monster the anime made it out to be, and is rarely ever played even in its own deck. A 2500 attack beat stick can potentially win you games, especially with the ability to attack directly, but this is a trait shared by most Toon monsters. And in the modern era, there are a plethora of better Toons that you can play. The likes of Toon Blackluster Soldier or Toon Barrel Dragon have higher attack points and even removal effects to make OTK an easier. Toon Summon Skull just doesn't have the same versatility, and since it's comparatively harder to use, and doesn't have a beneficial level, there's no real reason for modern Toon decks to use it. But at the very least, you can use Summon Skull in the actual game the same exact way that Pegasus used it in the anime, taking advantage of its Toon properties while also beating down your opponent. It's just that this particular tactic is a lot stronger in the anime than in the actual TCG. Misleading us to number 4 is Illusionist Faceless Mage, one of the first ever illusion monsters introduced to the game, but only technically. 
You see, in the TCG, Illusion was never established as a real card type at the time, and so Faceless Mage just became a spellcaster monster with a flavor text which said that it can manipulate enemies with the power of illusions. But the manga version of this card was established as an illusion monster, which made it strong against black magic users and weak against demon magic. This made it a great card when Pegasus faced off against Yugi's Dark Magician in their first duel against one another, where Faceless Magician could have potentially destroyed Yugi's ace due to its illusion magic. But Pegasus wanted to do more than just destroy Yugi's monster, and activated Eye of Illusion to strengthen Faceless Mage even more, and immediately attack Dark Magician. This seemed like a strange move at first, because this battle actually ended up in a draw, where neither player took damage and no monster was destroyed. And so, Yugi believed that the coast was clear and summoned Celtic Guardian to attack the Faceless Mage. But Pegasus was a master manipulator, and Yugi had fallen right into his trap of Eye of Illusion, which allowed for Pegasus to take control of Yugi's ace monster and redirect Celtic Guardian's attack to it, destroying Yugi's new monster and leaving his life points devastated. This might not have been an issue for the King of Games, as after Pegasus passed turn, he immediately drew Summon Skull, a demon monster with the strength to bypass illusion magic, which might have allowed for Yugi to win his first encounter against Pegasus and immediately save his grandpa's soul, if it hadn't been for the timer that Pegasus had put in place, which counted down to zero a split second before Summon Skull could complete his attack, leaving Solomoto's soul trapped and forcing Yugi to embark on his journey to duel his kingdom. But for being such an important card in the anime, Illusionist Faceless Mage has never seen any real competitive success. It's never had a deck to call home, and a huge part of that is because it's a level 5 normal monster. This means that Faceless Mage requires a tribute to bring to the field, and with such a low attack stat, it's never been worth its summon, especially since it doesn't have any kind of beneficial effects. However, the Illusionist type that Faceless Mage represents was actually introduced to the modern game very recently. And although it isn't centered around countering dark magic, it's said to be a really strong engine thanks to its new fusion monsters, fusion spell, and illusion support that allow the deck to be a pretty competent engine in fusion-focused strategies. And you'll even be able to enact Faceless Mage's iconic anime moment as the Eye of Illusion that Pegasus uses is actually coming to the TCG, and can be activated if you control either an illusion or spellcaster type monster to apply one of three effects. You either prevent both monsters from being destroyed by battle, take control of an opponent's monster until the end phase, or redirect an attack to another one of your opponent's monsters. So while Faceless Mage has never seen any real use in the TCG, it's really cool that the way Pegasus used in the manga was part of the inspiration for the newest and most interesting type introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh, which could potentially lead to this iconic monster one day getting a proper retrain. And bursting to number 3 is the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, another one of Pegasus' most iconic Toon Monsters. The TCG Blue Eyes Toon Dragon comes with a lot of traits that define early Toon Monsters, such as Summoning Sickness, the ability to attack directly if your opponent controls no Toon Monsters, and even the downside that forces Blue Eyes to blow itself up if Toon World is destroyed. But Blue Eyes Toon Dragon also has a lot of traits that make it really similar to Toon Summon Skull. They both require you to pay 500 life points in order to declare an attack with them, and they have the same summon condition which requires you to tribute monsters while you control Toon World, but Blue Eyes Toon Dragon requires two tributes instead of one. Likewise, the early anime version of Toon World is very similar to Summon Skull, as they're both just regular normal monsters that have been affected by Toon World. Which means the only effects that Toon Blue Eyes has is its regular Toon properties, as well as the ability to hide within the pages of Toon World. But the strongest aspect of Toon Blue Eyes was its ability to absolutely humiliate Seto Kaiba. In their first duel against one another, Pegasus was destroying Kaiba, and took the time to taunt, annoy, and laugh at his opponent as Kaiba desperately struggled to save his brother Mokuba. But the biggest insult of his entire duel was when Pegasus stole Kaiba's Blue Eyes with the effect of Prophecy and transformed into Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. This enraged and disgusted Kaiba as Blue Eyes respected his pride and power as a duelist, and so seeing it reduces such a pathetic form sickened him, and caused him to grow even more annoyed that Pegasus was treating this duel like a joke. And this is exactly what Pegasus had wanted, as not only was Toon Blue Eyes an excellent beat stick that even Kaiba struggled to deal with, the rage that it brought about forced Kaiba into making rash decisions to prevent Pegasus from gaining a second copy to his field, which ultimately ended up in his own defeat after he fell to his own crush card virus. Although despite how iconic Blue Eyes Toon Dragon ended up being, it rarely ever sees play in Toon decks. Since like Summon Skull, Blue Eyes Toon Dragon is outclassed as a beat stick since there are better, stronger boss monsters you can play that come with beneficial effects. However, Blue Eyes Toon Dragon actually managed to see a decent amount of competitive success in Magical Explosion FDK strategies. You see, Magical Explosion is a trap card that deals 200 damage to your opponent for each spell card in your graveyard, meaning you can do a ton of damage to your opponent with enough spell cards in your graveyard, easily FDK an opponent when paired with Life Equalizer. And so these strategies would play a ton of different consistent cards to either draw or thin their deck to ensure they'd always see both Magical Explosion and Life Equalizer on their first turn of the duel, while also putting a ton of spells in the grave. And one such card was Toon Table of Contents, which allowed you to add any Toon card from your deck to your hand, including another copy of itself. So these decks would use Toon Table of Contents to add another copy of itself to your hand, and because it doesn't have a hard once per turn, you can use the Toon Table to add a third Toon Table to your hand and thin your deck even more. 
but because you can only play three copies of the card, you won't be able to activate the third copy of Toon Table unless you have another Toon in your deck. And the best choice for these strategies was Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, because Blue Eyes Toon Dragon just so happened to be a level 8 monster, which meant that it was a great target for trade-in to put another spell in the graveyard and draw even more cards. So while Blue Eyes Toon Dragon isn't the powerhouse the anime made it out to be, it's cool that it managed to see some amount of success thanks to its advantageous level. And in a way, it's funny that it still mocks Kaiba, as his ultimate boss monster has been reduced to a simple discard fodder. And opening the page number two is Toon World, Pegasus' favorite card. However, Toon World in the TCG and Toon World in the anime are pretty much two different cards. In the TCG, Toon World is a continuous spell that pays 1000 life points in order to activate and has no effect, making it a pretty big disappointment compared to its anime version, which turned any monster you controlled into a Toon monster, protecting them from being destroyed by battle, and allowing them to hide within the pages of Toon World. This made the card an absolute powerhouse in the hands of Pegasus, because as soon as he got Toon World on the field, he suddenly had a major advantage that made every one of his monsters almost impossible to deal with, turning even the weakest of normal monsters into strong threats. But Pegasus played Toon World for more than just its tactical strength. He played it because he loved cartoons. You see, unlike most of the other characters in the series, Pegasus grew up in America and was raised on cartoons and comic books, such as Funny Bunny, a parody of Bugs Buddy, who constantly evaded his rival Rough Rough McDog. And Toon World allowed for every one of Pegasus' monsters to keep the spirit of these cartoons alive, squashing, stretching, and always avoiding attacks, just like the cartoon characters he loved. Which is why it's so unfortunate that the TCG version of this card just doesn't really do anything. For a while, Toon strategies were forced to run Toon World in some capacity, since most of the cards relied on it being face up on the field in some way in order to use them, which pretty much made Toon World mandatory. Up until the release of Toon Kingdom, which is always treated as Toon World while face up on the field. This gave Toon decks a Toon World that was finally worth running, as it gave Toon monsters extra protection, preventing your opponent from targeting them with card effects while also allowing you to banish cards on top of your deck to prevent the Toon monster from being destroyed. This turns Toon monsters into threats that actually mirror the anime counterparts, as now these monsters can never be caught by targeted card effects, nor can they be destroyed by regular means, which lets them live up to the title of invincible cartoons. But as a result of how good Toon Kingdom is, Toon decks no longer actually play Toon World, and while it's a shame that such an iconic card doesn't even see use within its own archetype, it's for the best. As Toon Kingdom better represents the power that Toon World had in the anime, and can actually protect your Toon monsters and turn them into anime level threats. And sacrificing to the number one spot is Relinquished, the representation of Pegasus' darker side after he allowed the Millennium Eye to influence him. Relinquish is a ritual monster, so you need to use Black Illusion Ritual in order to summon it. But if you manage to bring it to the field, you get access to its powerful effect, which allows you to target a monster opponent controls and absorb it, turn it into an equip card for Relinquished. And while it has a monster equipped to it, Relinquished gains the attack and defense of that monster, and if it would be destroyed by battle, you destroy the monster that's equipped to you instead. But that's not all because any battle damage that would be inflicted to you while Relinquish has a monster equipped is instead inflicted to your opponent. This made the card an insurmountable boss monster in Pegasus and Yugi's duel of Duel's Kingdom. In this duel, Yugi had managed to overcome Pegasus' mind scan with the Mind Shovel technique, allowing them to destroy Toon World and turn the duel around in their favor. However, this destruction caused Pegasus to finally take the duel seriously, as he used the power of the Millennium Eye to turn the duel into a shadow game, showing off his darker side once more. And the biggest indicator of this was that Pegasus was no longer using the fun-loving tunes he was known for, and instead relied on a weird and grotesque illusion monster to summon out Relinquish. Relinquish seemed almost impossible for Yama Yugi to defeat, as not only was it capable of dealing with every one of his monsters, he couldn't even destroy it by battle, as any attack he declared would end up destroying his own absorbed monster and dealing damage to himself. What's even worse is that because Pegasus had started a shadow game, an immense amount of pressure was being exerted into the regular Yugi, which meant that the Mind Shovel technique was taking a huge toll on his physical health, and even caused him to faint within the middle of the duel, leaving one last card to Yami. Thankfully, because of Yugi's strong friendship to Joey, Tei, and Tristan, Pegasus' Mind Scan powers were blocked, which allowed for Yami to take him off guard, saving Dark Magician with Mystic Mox, and then summon out a Magician of Black Chaos with the Black Magic Ritual that Yugi had left for Yami. This was Yami's trump card, but Pegasus still had one more trick up his sleeve, and he fused together the Relinquish and Thousand Eyes Idol to form Thousand Eyes Restrict, an even stronger version of Relinquish whose eyes prevented an opponent from attacking, and who managed to absorb Magician of Black Chaos with ease, which would have allowed for Pegasus to defeat the King of Games. If it hadn't been for Yami's genius planning, as Thousand Eyes Restrict ended up absorbing Yugi's set Karibo, which allowed for him to activate Multiply, spawning infinite Karibos that smothered Restrict's Thousand Eyes. And because in the anime, Karibo exploded on contact, Restrict was left weakened and unable to absorb Magician of Black Chaos, which allowed for Yami to strike the final blow to save his grandpa's soul. But if it hadn't been for Yugi's favorite furball, Relinquish and the Thousand Eyes would have easily carried Pegasus to victory. But for as iconic and powerful as the anime version of Relinquish was, the card itself has never been a huge threat to the TCG 
Relinquish's removal effect is actually pretty strong, and so managed to see some minor success in the early days of the game. But the reason why it rarely ever saw a large amount of competitive play was because it was a ritual monster. This means that to summon Relinquish, you need to have it in your hand alongside Black Illusion Ritual, as well as a monster to act as tribute fodder, meaning that you have to invest quite a few cards in order to bring it out. But while Relinquish itself didn't see too much competitive success, its evolved forms have actually seen a ton of play across the game's history. Thousand Eyes Restrict was format warping in Go format, as you could easily cheat it out with the effect of Metamorphosis by tributing a scapegoat token, and it acted as a great removal option to deal with your opponent's threats, causing Thousand Eyes to eventually find its way to the Forbidden Limited list. Then the retrain of Thousand Eyes, Millennium Eyes Restrict, saw competitive success due to its ability to be cheated out with Instant Fusion, which allowed for it to be used as a generic removal option that could also help a deck play around hand traps in a similar fashion to Called by the Grave. And last but not least, Relinquish Anima sees play in just about any deck that runs level 1 monsters, as yet another great removal option that's so infamous that it's changed the way people play the game to avoid accidentally playing into an Anima's Link Zone. Which is actually really cool that Pegasus's ace boss monster has genuinely had a huge lasting impact on the history of the game, even if its original form hasn't seen too much success in it itself. And it's a cool reminder that even the most fun-loving duelists can have a cool and mysterious side to them. Alright, and that's the list. If you like more anime videos like this one, let us know down in the comments below which characters you'd like for you to cover next. And remember to like the video, subscribe if you want to keep up to date on any future list, and thanks for watching.